Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you're all well, you beautiful, beautiful, amazing, wonderful people. It's still Tuesday. It's still Terrific Tuesday, and you're still looking terrific as we head into video two of two. That's correct, two of two. And we are talking about Sebastian Rogers. But, look, when we think of Sebastian Rogers, apart from getting absolutely pissed off because of how long he's been missing and seemingly nowhere, we're getting nowhere with it, and we're seeing the parents doing some things that some people are just, they're willing to look the other way and just say, look, life goes on. Yeah, I get it, life goes on, and you should. You still need to eat and you need to drink and stuff, but do you need to be shopping for new motorcycles? Uh, I'm not so sure, and I know that I certainly wouldn't, but who knows? We can't really say anything until we've walked a mile in those shoes, so let's leave it at that. But look, you can't help but be frustrated, because this just seems to be a regular thing. Children go missing, and seemingly nothing ever happens. Don't get me wrong, there are cases where things happen. Um, it might take decent police work. It might take a witness. It might take a confession. And look, the Sebastian Rogers case may be no different, as we draw a very stark comparison to another case that happened another young autistic boy who goes missing um this this was around six years ago vanishes like a fart in the wind and yeah he, he just he's got autism and and yeah vanishes and still not found to this day but there is a difference because dad would turn around and he would say why did i kill my son why would i kill my son and that would lead to him eventually being convicted of murder and he's now in prison jail and he is facing it i think he's in there for like 51 years something like that we'll look at it briefly and this is who we're talking about. We're talking about Joe Clyde Daniels. And this is a report from um, last year, I believe. And they're talking about renewing his efforts. Like, Joel's father's mum, so his granny doesn't believe that her son actually killed his son. Because the body was never found. And she, her, her thought process is, well, they've never found him because he's he's just not dead. He, he Her son, who who said that he killed his son, recanted that statement, and it's believed that that could have potentially been coerced, and it's certainly been said that he wouldn't have been convicted of the murder without that confession. So, again, is it eerily similar? Again, Joe Clyde, Clyde Daniels' family renews efforts for searching arts, efforts searching for answers. Dixon, Tennessee, there is a renewed effort to learn what exactly happened to Joel Clyde Daniels, a little boy who disappeared in 2018. He'd have turned 11 this week. Yes, his father is convicted of murder. Still, the boy's body has never been found, and family members are still seeking answers. Joe Clyde Daniels was only five when he disappeared from his Dixon County home. There was very little physical evidence. Still, there was a trial and conviction. But questions remain for one simple reason. Joel Clyde's body has never been found. As to the charge of first-degree murder in the felony crime, how does the jury find? Two years ago, a jury convicted Joseph Daniels of killing his son. Daniels is now serving a 51 years in prison. But to this day, Daniels' mother refuses to believe her son that killed her grandson, Joel Clyde, because the child's remains have never been found. I know they didn't find them because he's not dead, said April Collins. She remains her son's maintains her son's confession which he recanted was coerced and you can obviously look into that some of you may know but we're not the only people who are saying is this going to be something that can help could joe clyde daniel's tragic case help find sebastian rogers those looking for sebastian worked the joe clyde case and it goes on to say, Hendersonville, Tennessee, two months and nothing, a grim milestone. 15-year-old um, Sebastian Rogers disappeared from his Hendersonville home eight weeks ago. As the search continues, authorities now look back at another high-profile and very similar case 
which is the one we just spoke about, where he went missing in 2018, never been found, and some of the same people who look for him are now also looking for Sebastian Rogers. There's no denying the similarities in the two cases. Five-year-old Joe Clyde, autistic, was said to have wandered off from his home at night, barefoot, and in his pyjamas. So again, very eerily similar. That was six years ago this month. A massive search and nothing has been found. Our main focus is finding where he's at, his remains, or if he's alive, we find him alive, said David Marshburn, a search volunteer back in 2018. Now consider 15-year-old Sebastian, also autistic, and said to have left his home in Hendersonville at night, barefoot with a flashlight, two months ago. Massive search, nothing found. In the absence of information, what we will continue to do is and they basically say we're going to go back and forward, back and forward, and get new eyes on it and see whether we can see someone else. And it says, much like Sebastian, there was no physical evidence to explain Joe Clyde's disappearance. You may recall this case quickly turned criminal. The key differences is his father confessed to killing his son, and he quickly recanted that confession, but was still found guilty at trial. Why did I kill my son? Why did I kill my son? cried Joseph Daniels, Joe's father, in the video confession at trial in 2021. To date, Joe Clyde's body has still never been found. Legal experts say his father never would have been convicted without the confession. So what does this mean for Sebastian? We have not cleared anyone, but we have no evidence to support foul play, said Craddock. This despite hours of interviews with those close to Sebastian. So no confession, no physical evidence, no new leads. If anything is to be learned from Joe Clyde's case, it is this. If someone who knows something doesn't speak out with whether a confession or a new lead, it's possible that Sebastian's case will never be solved. Authorities have never named any potential suspects, and they say Sebastian's stepfather, mother, and biological father all continue to cooperate. Anyone with tips should call 1-800-TBI-FIND. But look, we can sit there and we can get frustrated. The downside is there's nothing really we can do, nothing we can do. We can have thoughts and feelings about it. We can speculate. We can we can pretty much have a discussion about it, but there isn't anything that we can do. The only thing that we can do is appeal to someone's better nature. If there is someone out there who is watching what is happening and they happen to stumble across the videos that are, that are talking about this and you know something, fucking say something. If you see something, say something. Again, this has got to stop. This is happening far too often where children are becoming cannon fodder to either evil parents they are becoming cannon fodder to monsters and systems that are set in place to extract them from the streets when they are neglected. And this has got to stop. Summer Wells, Michael Vaughan, Harmony Montgomery, Oakley Carlson, Sebastian, even the older kids, do you know what I mean? Caleb Harris disappearing off the fucking face of the planet as well. What is going on? And there are so many. You know, I name a few. But um, ultimately, there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these happen across the world. And it ain't going to stop. It ain't going to get better. Things are not going to change unless we decide to hold people accountable. If we decide that enough is enough, what are we going to do about it? Let me know down below what you think, and I'll catch you all in the next one. <laughs>